I mean, this, I'm afraid, sounds like a bit of desperation to me, doesn't it? I mean, it's supposed to be banned, these knives. I mean, they've been banned twice, I think, by two separate governments. And £300,000 to set up the scheme. Yeah. They Why? Reckon... Why does it cost that much? Goodness knows. Ask the Home Office, eh? Right. I mean, but they reckon so few knives are going to be handed in mm. that it'll cost only £14,000 right. uh, in, in handing out tenors to right. people who rock up there. But, of course, the people that rock up to a knife amnesty bin mm. and drop it in and say, where's my tenner? Right. And not the kind of people that are the problem. No. The people that are the problem <laughs> are the ones that are walking around the streets right. with these knives and these machetes. And actually using them. Tucked into their tracksuit bottoms right. and such like, pulling them out and stabbing people. Right. Now, 314 grand, if we put together the Home Office set-up money and the 14,000 they anticipate handing out, yeah. would pay a lot of police overtime yes. to get out onto the streets and do some stop and search yes. with a view to targeting those people who are believed or known to be knife carriers, mm. stopping them, searching them, hopefully finding the weapons and arresting them. Yes, and thereby making sure that they don't do it again. Because at the moment, apparently, we've got recidivist criminals, we've got career criminals, we're told, by the front page of the Daily Telegraph, who are just basically never going to jail, committing thousands of offences um, and not ever really being punished for it. In this regard, I have huge sympathy for the hard-working, proper police officers. Mm. You know the ones that love nicking people? Yes. That join right. to arrest criminals. Right. That know how to gather evidence. Yes. That know how to put case papers mm. together and get those bad people in court and convicted. Now, of course, sadly, only to see soft justice handed out time and time and time again. And the big headline should be on the front page of the Telegraph today, they could have shrunk this headline into three catastrophic words. Yeah. Crime does pay. Yes. That's the state of the nation in Britain in 2024. It is, because they've done some Ministry of Justice analysis uh, on some data here, uh, and basically offenders have been spared jail in more than 50,000 cases since 2007, despite having more than 50 previous convictions. The number of career criminals avoiding jail has now tripled uh, to something like 3,325 people. And I remember saying this earlier in the show, it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you imagine 3,325 people in a group outside your house, that's an awful lot of people. It's a lot of people committing an awful lot of crime. Yeah. Because they are repeat offenders again and again and again and again. These are the people walking into supermarkets on the high street and just helping themselves. Yeah. Taking bagfuls of alcohol, cigarettes and all that kind yeah. of other high value stuff like mm. the meat and all of that and just walking out stealing with impunity. Yeah. These are also the people that will have been subjected to, like, community resolutions right. and orders yes. and all that kind of stuff, mm. suspended sentences, every single thing you can imagine other than prison, and if any of them do get to the point where they get prison, they're coming out and re-offending. The entire criminal justice system in this country is an utter shambles, yeah. and it fails everyone, particularly victims of crime. And in turn, it is a deep, deep insult to every law-abiding, hard-working, decent soul who provides for their family, pays their bills, knocks themselves bandy, only to read headlines like this because thousands of people yeah. are getting away with it. Exactly. And amongst some of the rioters that have been arrested, uh, this has been highlighted because we've, there's one here, Adam Wharton, who admitted uh, burglaring a library in Liverpool. He had 16 previous convictions for 26 offences uh, at the age of 28. You know, these people are career criminals, as we've said, and he's probably never been to prison before. Well, if you go and go and throw a brick at a riot, you mm. are a complete and utter idiot. We yeah. know that. That's right. beyond dispute. Yes. And then, of course, it comes as absolutely no surprise that when they're arrested and charged and their fingerprints and their DNA are taken and their criminal records come up, oh, look, a list as long as your arm. Yeah. And have they ever been 
rehabilitated? Have they ever been reformed? Will they ever contribute to society? Will they ever be the kind no. of person you want to live next door to? And the answer is no. no. But there is a way that you can try to tackle this, and that is long jail terms. Yeah. I've met many, many people who have done long jail terms, and when they come out, because they've been banged up, and I'm talking 10, 20 years, yeah. they are determined never to go back. Never to go back. And of Which course, goes against everything that we're told, isn't it, by the sort of penal reform crowd and the people who say, oh, well, you know, prison doesn't do anything, it makes people into more uh, worse criminals, it makes them into hardened criminals, they learn more criminal activity when they're in there. Uh, there's no point in sending people to prison. Well, that's plainly not true, is it? Short jail terms, all of the aforementioned, yeah. can apply. Right. Long jail terms, no, no, no. You spend 10 or 20 years of your life in jail, you do not want to go back. Mm. Because you come to realise the the level of your offending, the effect of your, fen your offending, you realise the harm that you cause. Because you've got 20 years to think yeah. about it. 20 years, mm. it's a long time. And then, of course, people realise that they have sacrificed such a huge chunk of their lives mm. being behind the door for their wrongdoing. They then come out and they go, right, I'm going to make the most of what I've got left. And that means not going back to prison, which, of course, means don't commit crime. Yes. And, I mean, I'm not one for giving praise to Keir Starmer at all, um, but one of the things he has done, effectively, uh, was, to pu was to punish the rioters very quickly and very, um, you know, harshly to stop what was actually going on immediately. And it did stop it. But the flip side of that is... If they can mobilise 6,000 police mm. officers like they did in pretty short time to, to be strategically stationed mm. wherever they were, at the ready, all their public order kit ready, put on their helmets and shields, yeah. the flame-proof clothing, all of that, huge mobilisation ready to quell that crime, then why can't the police mobilise to tackle the scandals in our country mm. with regards to crime, which is, number one, the knife crime epidemic, yeah. which is leading to a tide of teenage blood flowing through the streets of our cities, yeah. and that is not an exaggeration. Mm. And then, of course, the other scourge on the high streets, which is making people avoid them, cheesing people off on a daily basis, and as for poor shopkeepers, it is shoplifting. Why don't the police get on board those kind of things instead of swanning about being a social service and doing anything other than the grubby work of rolling around on a pavement with these people. Exactly right, because look at the numbers here, right? In the year to March 2024, police recorded 27,470 offences of possession of an article with a blade or a point. 27,500. Yeah. That's an immense yeah. number, isn't it? Well, it's no surprise that hundreds of people every year are getting murdered by right. knives. Right. Killed by knives. It's absolutely out of control. Mm. Now, if only we had a police force that was able to sort that out. But I'm looking at the front page of The Guardian today, believe it or not. The Metro of Police, the UK's biggest police force, uh, is providing an inadequate or failing service in seven of eight key crime-fighting areas. And there are serious concerns about its management of dangerous offenders. This is an official inspection. Yeah, the Metropolitan Police. This is a police. disaster, isn't it? <coughs> the biggest police service in the country. Yeah. Failing in almost all areas of its operation. Yeah. Failing victims of crime. In other words, failing the public. Yeah. And, as the inspectorate says, they're making changes, but there's no improvements. Mm. Does this not mean that the Metropolitan Police, effectively, is not fit for purpose? I mean, it's still in special measures, as far as I'm aware, much like many other police forces in the country. Um, but Sir Mark Rowley was brought in, what, two years ago? Two to, years in to September, fix, it'll be. To fix what Crescent and Dick had messed up. Yep. And what's he doing? He's rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. <laughs> That's what he's doing, yeah. and consequently, there are no improvements. Yeah. It is absolutely scandalous mm. that people are being failed. And this comes as no surprise to me, because a few weeks ago, an internal Met Police report got mm. leaked, and they admitted to themselves that they're not serving the public. This is scandalous. And I would completely understand if people were going, well, what's Sir Mark Rowley doing then? Shouldn't he be sacked? Right. The trouble is that... the. I would then say, well, who do you replace him with? Yeah. This
current crop of senior police officers are out of the same identity kit. They use the same police speaky language. They do the same kind of blarly blar in front of promotion boards. They are equally as, well, many of them are as liberal and fluffy and woke yeah. as each other. And with one notable exception, the rest of them are just out of the same jelly mould. Mm. So I think all you'll get is more of the same. Yes. It's a very depressing thought for those of us who quite like to see law and order restored to the streets. Because I'll tell you what, I feel now, certainly in London, as though there is no law and order at all. And so what I have to say to everybody is please, please, please do everything you possibly can to ensure that you do not become a victim of crime. Mm. And that means in your home, have an alarm have CCTV, have suitable locks, don't do silly things like leaving the windows yeah. open and all that kind of right. thing. Your car, if you own a car, mm. do not just rely on the manufacturer's security yeah. system. You have to put in additional measures. A steering lock, for example, yeah. is a very useful bit of kit these mm. days because cars are generally stolen using tech right. and not tools. You need a tool to saw off a yeah. steering lock. And all these kind of things. And when you're out, please be aware of your surroundings. Mm. Don't pull your mobile phone out the minute you come out of an underground mm. station or off a train station. Yeah. Be aware of your surroundings, what you're doing. Please protect yourself. Please stay safe. And it breaks my heart to have to say this, but I'm forced into doing it because we're living in lawless Britain yeah. where so many parts of the country are plagued by crime committed by people who don't get suitably punished. Mm, absolutely right. I couldn't put it better myself, which is a terrible state of affairs for us to be in, but that's where we are. Keir Starmer uh, is supposedly going to fix that. I don't know whether he can. Uh, certainly if, if the Home Office idea of, of a knife amnesty in police stations for 10 quid uh, is the start of it, I don't think we're going to get very far. I'm